Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, future teachers. I hope you're having a great day today. And before we start our lesson, let me introduce myself first. I'm teacher Fatima from the class of Bachelor of Elementary Education, 3A, studying at Turlock State University. Our lesson for today is strategies in teaching music. There are various approaches used by educators when it comes to teaching music. Some of the best ways of teaching children music is to build upon a child's innate curiosity and teach them in a way that they learn best, similar to how a child learns their native language. One thing that all these methods have in common is that they teach children to not just be listeners but encourage children to be the creators and producers of music. These methods engage the child in active participation. These methods and variations of them are used by music teachers in private lessons and throughout schools worldwide. There are five strategies in teaching music. And now I will be discussing the first three methods. These are the Caudalli method, Orff method, and Dalcroze method. The first method is the Caudalli method. The Caudalli method is a way of developing musical skills and teaching music concepts beginning in very young children. This method uses folk songs, Korean hand signs, pictures, movable do, rhythm symbols, and syllables. It was first introduced in Hungary but is now used in many countries either alone or in combination with other methods. The Caudalli method is an approach to music education based on the philosophies of Zoltan Caudalli. Zoltan Caudalli was a Hungarian composer, author, educator, and expert on Hungarian folk songs. Although this method wasn't exactly invented by Caudalli, it was developed by his colleagues and students in the mid-20th century based on his teachings. Here are the components of Caudalli method. First is teaching music using rhythmic syllables. So now I will demonstrate to you the values of notes using rhythmic syllables and clapping. So in the first column are the notes from whole note to dotted quarter note. Second column is their symbols and the third column is their number of beats. So whole note has four beats. Half note has two beats, quarter note has one beat, eighth note is one half beat, sixteenth note is one fourth, then the dotted half note, the value of that is yung kalahati ng nota. So yung katabi ng dot dyan is half note. So ang half note ay two beats, so hatiin mo lang yun, so that is one. So two plus one is equals to three beats. Ganun din sa sa dotted quarter note. The value of quarter note is 1. So, hatiin mo yon is 1 half. Yun ang ipa-plus mo. So, 1 plus 1 half is 1 and 1 half. The fourth column is the rhythmic syllables. So, the rhythmic syllables of whole note is ta. So, anong napansin nyo sa pagbigkas ko? Diba tuloy-tuloy? Isang sound lang siya. Ta. Not Ta. It's only one sound with four counts. So when we do it in clapping, it's ta. Or pwede ring ta. Second note is half note. So it has two beats. And its rhythmic syllable is ta. Ta. Not ta. Two counts siya na di putol yung sound. Next is the quarter note. So it has one beat and its rhythmic syllable is ta. So if there is two quarter notes, it's ta ta. If we have three, ta ta ta. If we have four, ta 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 ta. Next is the eighth note. It has one half beat. So its rhythmic syllable is t. Now, di natin mapapakita yung iksi ng tunog na yan if hindi natin dodoblihin yung 8th note. So, ipagpalagay natin na may dalawang 8th note. So, we have 
T, T. Ang palakpak niyan is dahil kalahati ay kalahati din ng ating palad. T, 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 T. Next note is the 16th note. So, 16th note is one-fourth. Mas umikli. Kaya yung isang 16th note ay walang rhythmic syllables. So, we need two 16th notes. So, sa dalawang 16th note, the rhythmic syllables is T, R, T, R, T, R. Mabilis. So, if we have four 16th notes, we have T, R, T, R, T, R, T, R. Now, let's continue to dotted half note. So, it has three beats. And its rhythmic syllable is ta, three beats. And its clap is ta, ta. And the last note is dotted quarter note. It has one and one half beat. Its rhythmic syllable is tai, tai. So isang buong palakpak, tapos mabilis na i, tai. Again, tai. Bakit ganon kabilis yung i? Kasi one and one half yung beats. So how about the rest? Rest has no sounds, but it has counts. So I will show you how to do it. So whole rest has four beats. So it's like this. Bilang ka ng one, two, three, four. Next is half rest. So it has Two counts. One, two. Then the quarter rest has one beat. So if there is four, it's. So let's try to apply it in the rhythmic pattern. Let's start at the three quarter time signature. Ta. Ta 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 again ta 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 ta. Next is the two two time signature. Ta 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 again. Ta 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 ta. Last is the four quarter time signature. Ta 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 ta. Again, ta 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 ta. Ta ta. Okay, the next component is the codely hand signs. So it's a combination of hand signs and solfege singing. And now I will demonstrate it to you. So first is the do. 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 Next is the re. Re, re. Next is mi. Mi, mi. Next fa. Fa, fa. Next is sol. Sol, sol. Next la. La. Next is T. 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 And last, Do. 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 So, gawin natin siya ng buo. Do.
So let's try it at the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Do, do, sol, sol, la, la, sol, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, re, do, sol, sol, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, sol, sol, fa, fa, mi, mi, re. Do, do, sol, sol, la, la, sol, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, re, do. And now, before we proceed to our second method, I will first call five students to perform the codely hand signs and solfege singing. Wow, you are all so good! Thank you everyone for participating. Now, let's proceed to the second method. The second method is the ORF method. The ORF approach is a method of teaching children about music that engages their mind and body through a mixture of singing, dancing, acting, and the use of percussion instruments. For instance, the ORF method often uses instruments like xylophones, metallophones, and glockenspiels. This approach to music education was developed by Karl Orff, a German composer, conductor, and educator whose most famous composition is the Oratorio, Carmina Burana. It was conceived during the 1920s and 1930s while he served as music director of the Gunther Schul, a school of music dance and gymnastic that he co-founded in Munich. His ideas were based on his belief in the importance of rhythm and movement. Orff shared these ideas in a book titled Orff Schoolwork, which was later revised and then adapted into English as music for children. Other books by Orff include Elementaria, Orf Schoolwork Today, Play, Sing and Dance, and Discovering Orf, a Curriculum for Music Teachers. So here's an example of Orf Method. Now let's proceed to our third method and also the last for my presentation. The third method is the Dalcrow's method. The Dalcrow's method, also known as Dalcrow's Eurythmics, is another approach music educators use to foster music appreciation, ear training, and improvisation while improving musical abilities. In this method, the body is the main instrument. Students listen to the rhythm of a music piece and express what they hear through movement. Simply put, this approach connects music, movement, mind, and body. 
This method was developed by Emil Jacques Dicros, a Swiss composer, music educator, and music theorist who studied with Gabriel Fior, Mathis Lucy, and Anton Bruckner. So here's an example of Dicros method. That's all. I hope you enjoy our lesson. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day and God bless.